Hello everybody, all you history buffs, welcome today. We are going to have today a tour of the Archibald Borough Historical Society and we want to emphasize the word borough because we have so many sections in this town. We don't want to ignore any of them, especially the Einan section. The Einan section is like a town in itself, but then there's Sturges, Einan, Riverside, Dutch Hill, Frogtown, Downtown, Number Five Hill, um, and we have Edgerton, the Ghost Town, the Mining Town. Number Five Hill is adjacent to that. We have Stumpfield, we have the East Side, Gears Hill. You have all of those places. Maybe I missed some, like the Tipperary was an old section of Archibald Borough. Right now we are standing in front of the Archibald Borough building. The Archibald officials have allowed the society to, to have two rooms on the second floor. And we are going to leave here now and go up to the second floor. And by the way, there is no worry about handicap accessibility. People can just step onto the elevator, push a button, and they're on the second floor. So Dale, if we, you want to lead us up to the elevator, we can go up right now. Okay, we are going to the second floor. There is no handicap problems, no steps. We simply enter the elevator and head for floor two. This is the entrance to our Archibald Borough Historical Society. And everybody is welcome. What are we doing now? There's a Green Hill School over here too. You're getting me. Okay. okay. We are now entering the Archibald Borough Historical Society. We have so many artifacts, mementos, materials. We may have to rush through some of the articles we have. So let's start by just moving to the left from the main entrance. We have, we collect all kind of old pictures and we post them for our visitors to witness. Right here, we have a bookcase and I'll mention what are on the various shelves. Shelf number one has books that were written by local people. And the second shelf will have right here binders which are on various topics. We have Archibald in general. We have the Archibald pothole. We have uh, census materials, uh, material just on uh, uh, churches. And right here is the classic history of Archibald, written by now Father Edward Casey. The society has something very unique, tax records of 1957. They were uh, printed about 65 years ago. We, and that was found in the local garbage dump. Before we had the landfills, we had a garbage dump on Salem Road. That was found there. And moving just to the left, on this mental shelving, we have first items for sale. For example, Casey's book, which we mentioned, is now on CD, and the society would be selling that among other items. And we also have free items, especially the journals from the Genealogical Society. Come in, visit us, take the free items. Posters, continuing moving in this direction. The gem, or gems, of the Historical Society are the one, two, three, for filing cabinets. First, we call it miscellaneous. Material uh, is so large, we put them in envelopes. For example, we have in here violence in Archibald Borough. 
listing the murders, for example. There were murders in this town. And we have information if anybody is interested in doing research or just for curiosity, looking at the murders in the town. Moving on, we have obituaries. Perhaps every day we are open, the librarians here are filing obituaries. And we keep the entire obituary because it will have the name of the spouse, parents, mother's maiden name, dates, siblings, place of work. Obituaries are very essential to our research. And then we have cemeteries. The uh, largest cemetery in Archibald was the St. Thomas Aquinas Cemetery. And then we have for our Protestant brothers and sisters, the Archibald Protestant Cemetery. And we have files with the plot maps, we have list of burials, and some of our information actually goes outside of the limits of Archibald Borough. For example, Scott Township is in there. They had many, many cemeteries uh, in that large uh, township. And let's go over here. We have a vertical file. And in that vertical file, we have so many topics. For example, we would have Archbold Business and Industry. We have something in this big binder, Coal Breaker Fires. Just to illustrate the various topics we have, we have a folder on the Legion in town, the American Legion. Just to sh illustrate, and then we continue down to drawer two, we have sports, we have railroads, schools, etc. And in the last filing cabinet, this is really a gem, we have something called people. And in there, we have filed information on various, not only individuals, but family members. If I can see some of them, there's Padden with the famous Padden Hotel in Archbold on the corner of Pine and Wayne and other families. We could have uh, McLaughlin, Barrett, Colley, etc. Just want to give you the idea right now of what we have. Okay, let's continue on. We'll make the curve around the corner. We have a section here honoring the largest employer ever to come into our town, except for coal mining. Coal mining through the years had maybe thousands at the breakers, the collieries, on the railroads. But here we have Daystrom. It's located about midway between Archibald Proper and Einan section. It came to town in 1951, and there were name changes through the years. For example, it became Weston, Schlumberger. Today, the factory, unrelated to them, would be the Lockheed Martin. But we have a wonderful metal plaque here. And if the cameraman can pick this up, look at how it coincided. The Weston anniversary, 25 years, and the Archibald Burrow, 100 years in uh, 1976. If any of you had ancestors working back in Daystrom uh, about 1951, we possibly will have pictures of them. Daystrom was very active in their social work, baseball teams, swimming uh, activities, etc. So they are available to the public. And as a general library, we have ephemeral material right here. And moving down this wall, this is Big Bertha right here. It's a wonderful copying uh, machine for all our printing needs. It is not color, but it, it serves the purpose adequately. Almost every time we're open, we are making copies, either for in-house or for the public who come looking for information. This, by the way, came from Lockheed Martin, which we just mentioned, uh, through the efforts of Joyce Casey Petronchak. 
this is a wonderful uh, help to us. And if we can move down now, this computer table was also from the Petronchek families. It serves the purpose so well, and I would be remiss if I did not mention our computer right here. We use that frequently. One of the major sites is the Lackawanna County Marriage Applications. So much information on those sites. You can get names of uh, bride, groom, parents, maiden names, clergyman who perform the marriages, age of the uh, couple being married. That's a great site. And we also can bring up the census, U.S. Census on uh, our computer. Some of these can be achieved in your own home, but everybody is welcome to come in here, use the computer, and uh, get that information. Now, if we can raise the camera a little, we want to keep a record of uh, famous people in the town, you might say. Um, and here we have a photograph of, this is a cute caption there, meet the late Harry Sugarman. Well, right here, he was quite alive in front of his store. This is Main Street, if you can see it here. He began in 1938 in the building on the corner, the Stoback home. He was by trade a pharmacist. So in those days we call, he opened the drugstore there in the corner. And you all know how he expanded. In later years, the entire Sugarman Zion and Drug was moved to Route 6. But apparently, his successors or whomever did not have the acumen that Harry had. The building eventually was so eventual. It was like an institution in Archibald Borough. Uh, we saved some uh, items from the store, the iron and drug store. Continuing our move, we recently obtained a number of large photographs like this. Unbelievable. They were being discarded in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and uh, a very nice couple found them and donated them to the Historical Society. I want to mention the first portrait. That is James Archibald, for whom this town was named. Why? Because he was with the Delaware and Hudson Gravity Canal Company, etc., and the railroad came from Carbondale to Archibald under his auspices. Right there, James Archibald. The town prior to Archibald was Laurel Run. James Archibald. And now, the family eventually, a little bit later on, moved to Monroe Street, yes, Monroe Avenue in Scranton. Here is a picture a drawing of the, maybe you can't see these words, residents of James Archibald, right there. Residents of James Archibald. This has, re, has been torn down. The University of Scranton now has maybe a parking lot or an extended building right here on Monroe Avenue in Scranton. Next to this house on Monroe was the Catlin House, which is now the library and the museum, you might say, of the Lackawanna Historical Society. But here, there is a connection there. The daughter of James Archibald married the neighbor, George Catlin. She died at a, a younger age. He then married the housekeeper, who was an Irish girl from Carbondale. So that was, people didn't like that because they were wasps back then. There, but we're, we're glad for this history. If you can pick up this narrow shelving here, Charles Chips, everybody remembers them, but inside the shelving, one of the most frequent visitors before the pandemic was an elderly gentleman from Einan, the Einan section, George Mishko. And he did ha local, his handicraft, 
and we kept that and he did scrapbooks which were so pertinent going back for somebody so at, at such an advanced age there's something unique he donated this is a fire starter you get to put a wick in there and it would help start the uh, fires in the fireplace in a home in this corner we have vintage material we can't name everything I wonder if the camera could pick this up our people repair their own shoes at home this is a last put the shoe on there and put a sole or heel on it and right here if I may, may make a sound on that that is what we call a coal pail Officially, it's a skull. People in the older days had a coal stove in their kitchen or the coal furnace in the cellar. They would need a skull to carry the coal around. Up the steps, maybe the coal bin was in the cellar. Take the coal up. A large piece of coal. It's about one cubic foot. One cubic foot of anthracite coal weighs 53 pounds let's move now to, this is the north wall outside the windows would be number five hill we collect maps local and worldwide and we also have a good collection of photographs our librarian here is Sam Motts. He's going to hold them up to the camera, just uh, maybe four or five, to show how we have cataloged. Uh, can the camera pick them up? Mm -hmm. Archibald people. We have a good one on Archibald scenes, too. That's just a sample. That might be sufficient for the people to get the idea of what we have there. Moving over here, can the camera pick up? This was the marquee from the Alco's Barber Shop. That was run by Jimmy Alco. People still remember him. He has currently a son who is a priest in the Scranton Diocese. And similar to that, could we read that? I'll move this picture out of the way. Angie Tinti's Beauty Salon. That was a shingle in front of her house on Main Street next to what is now the Moon Tower Bar and formerly it was Caesar's Bar. Uh, that was the, the, the Baldo family. Angie Tinti, she had that beauty shop in her home. And we have pictures. This may be an actual spittoon from one of our bar rooms way back 1860 uh, our librarian wants to uh, mention this picture what is that Samuel 1860 taken from the number five hill looking towards the uh, white oak breaker and uh, Church Street Okay, he's got and that. And the church is not there yet because it's not built. St. Thomas. St. Thomas hmm. Church. And that's the gravity. We are, in a sense, fortunate to be so, so historical. The gravity railroads. We had two actual tracks. The loaded track and the light track. One carried coal and one carried the empty cars back to a breaker. Right where we are today, one to the west, loaded track, a little to the east, behind the church was the empty track. We have various pictures, someone can come and look at them, like Rice, employees of Reisner's Sewing Factory. That was a well-liked place for these women to work, but there was a terrible fire there in 1973. Probably all of you have heard of the ballot box. Well here is an actual ballot box. This was given to us from the works of 
Lenny Hosey, who was an Archibald official, and we have a sample voting. They don't use that today, but in the past, you just pull down a lever to vote for your favorite candidate. We have a collection of beautiful old magazines. The magazine is called Reminisce. We have so many of them. People come in and they could come in and read them, take some home, and we have those wonderful, wonderful new old newspapers. Some are like special editions. For example, Kennedy assassinated, something like that, or the others would be indicative of anniversary editions. So much information on them. Now, if we can quickly do the uh, wall over here. Right here, these are representative of, of a television program, very popular in the 1950s. That should be Howdy Doody, and that should be Claraville. Some of you uh, viewing this may remember the uh, theme song. It's Howdy Doody time. That was from them. And moving along quickly, we have a lending library. Members, we do have a membership fee, but anybody can, could come in. This is a public building. Come in and go through our files and look, ask questions of our librarians. Uh, there are reference books here. There are biographies. There are books of local history. And while I'm here, I think of something. One of the best known women in the town was Marion Munley, but there was also another woman. She lived on, born in Ireland, she lived on Salem Road, and there is an actual book dealing with her, staking her claim. Her name was Belinda Mulrooney. She became queen of the Klondike. Uh, this book is available for anyone desiring it. Continuing up here, we have uh, metal shelving, mostly of uh, coal mining material, some artifacts from the railroad, especially the Gravity Railroad. And these souvenirs, so valuable. This, maybe I can put it down, you can see it better, next to its uh, companion there. These are known as carbide lamps. Can you imagine a miner 500 feet underground? It's pitch black. So he, he would have to put that on his helmet, such as this. Here we have a helmet and the carbide lamp on the front. Just to walk through that darkness downstairs. Okay, we'll just briefly mention, here's a machine that younger people will know what, not know what it is. This is a typewriter. Souvenirs from our centennial, 1876. We'd like to start collecting old bottles, uh, as you see any, if you want to add them to us. A newer addition to our library is family histories. And look, we have so many already. Uh, Baltus, uh, Biden. We have information on the president's family. Now, this is not political, but it deals with did you know he had a relative, grandparents in Oliphant named Finnegan? That would be in there, and he was with the Blewett family. And all of these, Burke, we have a couple on Burke, Colley, Curran, Gouin, uh, Krinitsky, and I think Trusheski is right down here, Pickering. But that's an example. If any of you seeing this today have a family history, we'd love to have it. We can make a copy on our, the printer we saw, and we could add it to our collection. This map, right above it, early Pennsylvania. Is it 1867 there? Some of you, but it goes way back. This was donated by the former late councilman, Joseph Sh Simon. But look at the frame itself. It may be worth as much as the old, old map. Now, our society has two rooms. Could we now go quickly to the back room the door to the back room, we tried to get material about Johnny Mitchell. John Mitchell was president of the United Mine Workers. You all have heard of John L. Lewis probably. Well, he preceded him. Johnny Mitchell has a monument on the Adams Avenue side of the
courthouse in Scranton. There's an actual statue and a big monument and over this statue is the inscription, Champion of Labor, Defender of Human Rights, Johnny Mitchell. But he has a local connection. He was brought into the Catholic Church by the priest across the street, Father Tom Comerford, who was a character in his own right. Uh, John Mitchell was the first lay person to lie in state at the Cathedral Church in Scranton. So, great labor leader. He spoke in the uh, area towns too. We also have in our collection a number of issues of the Archibald Citizen. Right here today on display at the table is Archibald Citizen and the date is 1907. We have uh, other issues, 1903, 1906. By looking at these, you can also get information about the businesses in town. Uh, you just saw, it says, an interesting story. Martin Colley, he was one of the leaders in the business operations of Archibald Borough. The, uh, and, and local news, national news, Here's our president, Thomas Jefferson. He was elected in 1800 to give a story about him. Here's more on Martin Colley illustrating how influential he was in the borough. And uh, the names associated with the Archibald Printery was Philbin, Patrick and uh, a McHale. They were the old time leaders that developed this newspaper. So Archibald did have its own newspaper. Here's another full page article, Collie Brothers Cash Store, Archibald PA. And we have also some individual newspapers besides the Archibald Citizen. Over there we have the Morning Republican. 1873. And 1873. Dale uh, got these donated by who? Bill Wright from up in, uh, I think he lives in Dunmore. Okay. So newspapers are a valuable source of uh, information from the past. So we invite anybody, come in any day, we're open. Sit here and go through them. You'd find them interesting. This and that and all the ads. And also interesting is the uh, listing of cures for those various diseases we had back then. You wouldn't believe what's in there. This, uh, this book was donated by uh, attorney uh, Bob Munley. This is from 19... 06 to 1909 but it it's in uh, good shape this is the the newer paper the older paper was very thin I'm not sure when it was changed but it's a big difference we have um, people working here uh, Dale, could you get a picture of both walls, the left and the back wall, showing the graduation pictures we have? Can't escape. <laughs> okay, right here, I, I, we have to point this out. Right here, cameraman, we have collections of yearbooks from Valley View and Archibald High School. And we have some artifacts. Remember the patrol boy right here, like that? We collect. This was a gavel from a class president, 1956, Archibald High School. We just have so many items, we cannot take time today to point out everyone. An old photograph of the Archibald High School. Bill Burke 
has brought in binders and he, he is placing in them materials such as cheerleaders pictures, frontline pictures, etc. and some athletes. And this I think is so unique, uh, Archibald High School. But can you notice the colors? Green and gold. Those were the colors of Archibald High School. Great find. Okay, if we could move down our pictures. Now, if somebody is looking, let's say for your grandfather, he graduated in 1952, you don't have to waste time going through them all. We have an index of our uh, graduation pictures. We have an index of our yearbooks. Continuing on our tour, we have material on St. Luke's Lutheran Church here, former pastors, and a nice photograph of, is it Michael? Yeah, Michael Barrett at Cauley's Dam. That may be from the 1920s or 1930s. We're not sure on that. And on both sides of the cabinet, there's our gravity slope picture there. On both sides of the cabinet, we have pictures from Our Lady of Shestahova Church in Einen, the Einen section of Archibald. If our cameraman could get the uh, some of the photos there. And anybody can come in anytime uh, with your iPad or whatever and take pictures if you have an interest in them. We have on the table some of the works of uh, the most best known artist in the area now, Austin Burke, on the table. And if I may point up to the wall, this is a drawing by Austin Burke. Right there, if you didn't see it, Archibald High School, autographed. We would like to have an exhibit of his photograph someday. Continuing on, we're almost finished. We have this bookcase. We don't want to be really parochial, Archibald, Archibald, Archibald. We, we would like to share with our neighbors. So in this bookcase, the title of the bookcase would be Suburbs of Archibald. For example, we have Blakely Peckville. We have Oliphant. We have Jessup. We have Scott Township uh, to honor our neighbors. And we hope they honor us. Continuing, a Boy Scout cap and his credentials, kerchief, from 1940, 80 years old. We have an entire cabinet of artifacts. We cannot take them out, just too many right now, but anybody can come in, pull them out, sit down, see what we have. And you'll have one explanation when you do it. What is it? A three-letter word. Wow! Wow! One I want to mention, though, it's a little larger. We have Mid Valley Rye. Archibald had its own distillery. They made booze right over on Main Street until the factory burned in uh, the 1940s. Hugh Brady, great political leader, was involved with that. And we brought in some artifacts from Ladies' Kitchen, uh, grinder for cabbage, and don't forget, it was not coleslaw, it was cabbage salad. We're going back now to our history. The old washing board, so many more small uh, artifacts. This object here is a natting machine. It was purchased at the Charlie Grogan drugstore circa 1950. It will still work with the little oil, uh, an adding machine. The boy wanted his mother to buy it, and she did. In the front room, we mentioned the pictures of James Archibald and the Archibald family home. Also, these three large, this could be a photograph. Sometimes we can't distinguish photographs and paintings. Photographs. This is from the bottom of the pothole. Is this the bottom? Our librarian is here. 
uh, uh, somebody in the bottom of the archival puddle looking up. Uh, right here. And of course these can be taken off the wall. If someone is really interested with your pad, take a picture. Those came from that being discarded. And uh, we were very thankful to uh, the Marin family or the Young family who found these. Yeah, that was Eddie and Linda Young. Eddie and Linda Young. They, they could have disregarded them or whatever. And here's another one. That's taken from the bottom out. From the bottom out of the archival pothole. Okay, we're leaving this room now, but we can't ignore what's right here. These are mostly gowns, women's clothing. We have a mannequin, as you saw in the other room, from the Archibald Centennial, 1976. We have athletic gowns, uh, not gowns, my mistake, athletic jackets. There's a Jimmy Walsh gown, uh, I don't like, uh, not a gown, uh, an athletic jacket. These are the gowns over here. Elaine Calgy was a real contributor of Centennial gowns. Myron Hanemuth, uh, he was a sort of a surveyor. We have tools from him. But I would like to show, uh, you can't see it very well. Use your auditory, auditory senses back there. That metal suitcase contains the bridal gown of Mrs. Jackson. She was a Barrett from Railroad Street. That is her wedding gown. Okay. Did you get a picture of the Archibald? This is old time Archibald. You can sit and pick out the residences of the people. Maybe we can conclude with this. This is a temporary display case as opposed to our other cases. This currently, we once again call Suburbs of Archibald. Maybe you can pick out with your camera, Jessup, Vandling, Troop, Dixon City, etc., etc. We want to be associated with other towns, even though we are Archibald number one. So uh, maybe our librarians could tell us if we forgot something important. Okay, well, we could conclude with that. We want to thank you all for watching and listening. We had a large Irish population in this town. May I conclude with a little blessing for you all. May the breeze always be at your back and may you be in heaven three days before the devil knows you're dead and come to visit us. And that's a 10-4.